Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about external features of the cerebellum. Now it is part and parcel of hindbrain or rhomboid cephalon and these two you can see are the cerebellar hemispheres which are connected in the midline by a warm light structure. This is termed as vermis. Now this entire thing is related to the tentorium cerebelli. So here exactly lies the tentorium cerebelli which separates this occipital lobe from the cerebellar hemispheres. See this. So this is superior surface of the cerebellum and below is the inferior surface. So by and large there are two surfaces superior and inferior and there are two notches anterior and posterior. This posterior notch is lodging Fox cerebelli one of the extension of dura mater whereas within the anterior notch there lies the brain stem say this. Now there are three cerebellar peduncles with which the cerebellum is literally hanging so these three cerebellar peduncles are nothing but bundles of white matter connecting the midbrain pons and medulla with the cerebellum respectively so out of these three the middle one is the largest and thickest say this is the pons and behind it is continuous with this middle cerebellar peduncle say this on either side you can also clearly see over here and similarly posteriorly we will get superior cerebellar peduncle and here you can see inferior cerebellar peduncles. Now on the surface you can see there are elevations and depressions. These elevations are termed as folia or folium and depressions are termed as fissures or fissure. Okay so there are gyri and sulci for the cerebral hemispheres and there are folia and fissures for cerebellar hemispheres. Now it is said that 85 percentage of the surface area is found embedded within these fissures. So what you see over here is just the 15 percentage of the surface area exposed to the surface. Just because the surface area is very large and it's not able to accommodate within the small posterior cranial fossa. Say this. This is the skull and here will be the tentorium cerebelli so beneath this within this small area we need to accommodate the large surface area containing cerebellum and so as we need to have such convolutions in the form of fissures and folia and so as the entire cerebellum can be fit within this small posterior cranial fossa so in this sagittal section you can appreciate the fissures and folia and the fissures are going into considerable depth of the substance of cerebellum reaching almost up to the white core of cerebellum say this is a white core of cerebellum and this pattern or branching tree pattern is formed because of abundant fissures and folia and this is termed as arbor vitae cerebelli. Now to understand the features of the cerebellum we need to cut the brainstem and we need to detach brainstem plus cerebellum from the midbrain so let's just cut it from the crust cerebri and let's just separate the brainstem from the cerebrum. So here I am cutting the cross cerebri. So here I have separated the cerebellum and brainstem together. See this midbrain pons and medulla and these three are connected with the cerebellum via three cerebellar peduncles superior, middle and inferior. Now as we have discussed it is having two surfaces superior and inferior. Superior surface is almost continuous with the vermis which is in fact convex whereas inferior surface you can see there is a longitudinal furrow and within the furrow you will find vermis. So this is termed as vellacula and on either side of the vellacula there are sulci. These are termed as sulcus vellaculi. So over here this is the vermis and these two are cerebellar hemisphere they are inferior surfaces so it is very easy to identify superior from inferior surface even if we don't have the brainstem attached and if you get only cerebellum then with this feature you can easily identify the superior vermis is convex whereas inferior vermis is found within the vellacula. Now as we have discussed there are two notches the anterior notch lodges this brainstem whereas this posterior cerebellar notch it is deep see this it is steep and here lies the fox cerebelli. 
now regarding fissures there are three fissures and for that just understand these are the flocules and deep to it will be peduncle of flocules and this peduncle of flocules will be connected with the nodule let me show you the nodule so when you see the sagittal section you will appreciate this is the nodule so over here lateral to that you will find peduncle of flocules and then there is flocule so this is a completely separate part from the rest of the cerebellum with a postero lateral fissure so flocules plus nodule are separated from rest of the cerebellum by postero lateral fissure and rest of the cerebellum is termed as corpus cerebelli now within this corpus cerebelli this remaining part there are two main fissures this is fissura prima which is found along the superior surface at the junction of ventral two third and dorsal one third so this is fissura prima and second fissure is at the junction of superior and inferior surface this is horizontal fissure there are multiple fissures but these three fissures are prominent again i am repeating posterolateral fissure separating flocular nodular lobe from rest of the cerebellum which is termed as corpus cerebelli and rest of the cerebellum is further divided into two lobes by this fissura prima into anterior lobe and posterior lobe and this is just a horizontal fissure separating superior surface from inferior surface so if you want to classify the cerebellum anatomically we can classify it with two main fissures posterolateral fissure and fissura prima now let's understand further subdivision of the cerebellum by this diagram so here this is superior surface and you can see this is vermis and these two are the cerebellar hemispheres now in the vermis it is subdivided into lingula central lobule culmen declive and folium and there are its corresponding cerebellar hemispheres or there are corresponding lateral areas so there is no corresponding lateral area for the lingula but for the central lobule there is ala for the culmen there is quadrangular lobule uh, for decline there is lobular simplex and for folium there is superior semilunar lobule so this is how the superior surface is subdivided here you can see this is fissura prima and here will be the horizontal fissure similarly this is to show you the inferior surface and its subdivision so this is vermis and these are the cerebellar hemispheres this is nodule these two are flocules and this is the connecting structure or peduncle of the flocule okay and here what we were discussing is the posterolateral fissure so this entire thing is separated from the rest of the cerebellum this is termed as corpus cerebelli and within this corpus cerebelli uh, this is uvula and its corresponding cerebellar hemisphere is tonsil this is pyramid and here is the biventral lobule and this is the tuber and this is inferior semilunar lobule so by and large along the inferior surface you will get these many vermal and this corresponding cerebellar hemispheres here you can appreciate the horizontal fissure so these two diagram are suggestive of how the cerebellum is divided anatomically and how the vermal and this cerebellar areas are formed so so far what we have seen is the anatomical classification now in this diagram this is to show you the morphological classification so morphologically cerebellum is divided into archi cerebellum paleo cerebellum and neo cerebellum so if we include this flocculonodular nodular lobe plus lingula then it will be the archi cerebellum then this anterior lobe anatomical anterior lobe plus pyramid and uvula then it becomes paleo cerebellum or spinal cerebellum and rest of the posterior lobe spinous pyramid and uvula this is the neo cerebellum or cerebro cerebellum so by and large morphologically we can divide the cerebellum into three now this archi cerebellum is also termed as vestibular cerebellum because it is related to the tone posture equilibrium of the trunk muscle whereas this paleo cerebellum is related to the maintenance of tone posture equilibrium of the proximal limbs whereas this neo cerebellum or the cerebro cerebellum is related to the skillful voluntary activities of the small joints and fine movements of the small joints similarly when we take a section of the cerebellum we will find deep inside 
cerebellar nuclei these are termed as deep cerebellar nuclei because they are embedded deep inside within the white core so in this section here will be the lingula this is the nodule and over here will be the roof of the fourth ventricle now by and large there are four nuclei from lateral to medial this is dentate nucleus and it is crumbled bag shaped and it is related to the neocerebellum these two are nucleus emboliformis and globosus together they are termed as nucleus interpositus and these two are related to the paleocerebellum and here is the vestigial nuclei this is also termed as roof nucleus because it is related to the roof of the fourth ventricle and it is part and parcel of archicerebellum or vestibular cerebellum so similar like division of the vermis and the cerebellar cortex the deep cerebellar nuclei are also divided as per the morphological classification so the same thing can be observed while taking section so if we take a section at the horizontal fissure and if we lift up the superior and inferior surface and if we see it from behind see it closely here this is the white core of the cerebellum this is what we have seen just now in the diagram and here will be the fissures and folia and this is nodule and here this is the white core and here you can see crumbled back shaped nucleus this is the dentate nucleus see on either side you can appreciate and then deep inside you will get nucleus interpositus and vestigial nuclei so rest of the nuclei are not clearly seen but you can clearly appreciate the dentate nucleus crumbled back shaped nucleus and it is related to the neocerebellum say this so these are the external features of the cerebellum hope you understood well thanks for watching